Welcome everyone, this is the conclusion for the fantastic play-by-email multiplayer series between Agrippa Maxinius and myself, who thankfully joins me here. Agrippa, how are you doing? Hey, how's it going, man? Uh, well, I guess, you know, all things considered, we're, we're not, none of us are doing too well, um, but, uh, you know, we're getting by and just kind of uh, taking it day by day, I guess. Yeah, that's true. I mean, there's real life going on. There's a, a real war being fought, a war on, you know, the virus, but... <laughs> But uh, Absolutely. how did you like this series, man? The, the, here we are sitting I, at the end of it. and um, I, really, I really enjoyed it. I, I had a lot of fun. And I have to say, you know, it's been a long time um, since I've actually done a sort of like multiplayer series um, on, on sort of an operational level like this. And I think the best part of it is just the community itself, the way they respond, the ideas they give you. Um, and just sort of like their, you know, sort of their perspective on what's going on is exciting to see. Um, because you may feel like you're completely crushed, uh, but there's always somebody out there that's kind of like, oh, he's going to pull it through, uh, et cetera. <laughs> uh, in, in terms of this series itself, I, I felt um, there's a lot more about this particular game that I absolutely need to learn. Um, the game is a lot more complicated than, than I think I in, initially expected it to be. Uh, one mm -hmm. thing that I've noticed is when you play against the AI, uh, it's nowhere near as complicated as playing against uh, multiplayer. And I guess because, of course, a human opponent uh, can can really just think outside the box uh, and do a number of different things. Uh, and uh, it was interesting to sort of see that, see that dynamic and uh, and enjoyable for sure. Yeah, I would say that the the biggest thing for me was the the fog of war. Um, you kind of have a or you get a feel for the things an AI is going to do. Um, you can actually even just play. I haven't played enough of these games to f completely figure out the AI, but you just kind of have a sense. And the thing with playing against a human, playing against you, is I had no idea what you would do from one turn to the next. And that, like, wild range of possibilities, um, it lends itself a lot to the drama, the excitement, the suspense. So th that's just something that you just cannot get from the, the computer. Even if the computer is good on, like, a local tactical level, I feel like the AIs, I mean, a building, like, a strategic AI is so difficult so something that which can actually plan ahead, you know, multiple turns in advance. I think that any AI can, you know, capture, like there's, let's say there's a local, okay, I have three units which are surrounding this one unit. The AI knows to attack that unit. Tactical, right. local, it Absolutely. knows how to do that. But the strategic, like, oh, I need to move forces here this turn so that five turns from now I can do an invasion, that's... I, that's something that the AIs usually struggle at. Exactly, so. exactly, yeah. I guess, like, even, you know, with, with games like chess, for instance, I guess the grandmasters are capable of thinking, you know, seven or eight moves ahead. And certainly in a game like this, the more you can think ahead and, and anticipate what your, what your opponent's going to do uh, is going to help you big time. Um, you know, I think one thing I did was when I faced the AI, any time I launched attacks into uh, Poland, um, I pretty much just wiped the board with the... Uh, the Russian defenders. Uh -huh. But then when I was playing against you, I noticed like, well, see, you know, Tortuga is actually capable of retreating his units and reinforcing them. So yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> if, if I was, and, you know, and that was like an, you know, uh, a really like, uh, for me, it was a real unfortunate realization. Because, <laughs> because the strategy against the AI is like the AI will, will go down to seven or six and just kind of hang out there, you know. Um, but when you have a, a human opponent, it's actually much more realistic uh, also in the in, in the actual perspective of, of a war like this, because obviously you're not going to have a unit that's going to remain at the front line forever. You're going to be constantly swapping them out for reserves, uh, new units, etc. And uh, you don't get that really with the AI. You can kind of, uh, like you said, you can anticipate what they're going to do. But more importantly, you can anticipate like what's important to them and play around that. You know, And uh, yeah, like you said, the, the player can be very strange in his approach, really uh, just change things. Yeah, and so you brought up Poland. Let's let's actually just start here. Let's dive into a, some of the, like, I'm kind of curious um, your strategy. So first of all, is it correct? Is it correct to say that you were going for an east first strategy? Oh yeah, right from the beginning. And I felt bad about doing it. I sort of lost my confidence. I would say about maybe about turn four or five. And the reason being, I had remembered, um, and this is where, you know, having a multiplayer opponent really plays into it. I had remember us having a discussion before um, the actual game, and I had mentioned to you, like, that that had been a successful strategy for me. So then I started going, like, well, wait a minute. If I'd said that to him, then 
<laughs> probably going to prepare for that, you know? So maybe now I need to kind of like, you know, go back to the Western approach and ignore the East. So I sort of like second guess myself and I lost confidence. Mm. And I think that absolutely cost me uh, because I should have kept attacking. Uh, the same is true in Serbia. Um, you know, I was, I kind of knew that against the AI, I could just keep attacking Serbia, uh, taking units out, reinforcing them. And eventually I would take, uh, you know, uh, cities. But I realized, like, you could always reinforce those units. So I was like, eh, maybe I should just kind of stay put here and uh, and see what he does. That's, you know? I mean, that's yeah. really interesting that you brought this up because, first of all, um, I think you're in good company. <laughs> the younger Von Moltke had a similar dilemma about whether or not oh, to wow. pull. I mean, you remember he, he pulled two cores off the Western Front at a really critical time in order to face, right. in order to, you know, be able to face the Russians. Um cores which didn't get end up getting there until after um tannenberg had happened so you know <laughs> it, it was a moot point by the time those cores arrived and maybe some people always like to speculate that maybe if those two cores had been present on the western front germany would have been able to break the back of uh, france they would have been able to push to paris so you're right, suffering right, from yeah. exactly the same the dilemmas same right. <laughs> this, this this kind of like the fog war that's why i really like the fog war because um I didn't know how many units you had at times. I was just like, you know, in my head, I, I didn't have any idea how many German forces were coming. Were I didn't know how much. Look at I asked the question, is it fair to say you were going for an east first approach? That's because right, you exactly. seem to have a lot of forces on the west still. So I have no idea. You know, you seem to be strong on both fronts, basically. So uh, it, yeah. I couldn't be sure. <laughs> well, I, I mean, and and one thing I wanted to ask you because that's what I my my biggest curiosity was was the land the uh, actual landing towards the end where you managed to get um, forces in uh, Wilhelmshaven and that's Bremen right. and those areas. Mm -hmm. Like, how did you do that? So see that. So this is where I think um, there's absolutely a difference in um, in skill level for this game because like I would have no idea how how to even do that. Like how to do a like for instance how to do um, a landing. Uh, like from land onto you know enemy territory for instance yeah well uh, isn't there like a zone of control that stops you from being able to take that area or i'm not an expert the uh, amphibious invasion which you were the recipient of um was yes. the first amphibious invasion i had ever done in the game so wow. it was a really kind of like let's just gamble on this let's just you know um i wanted to essentially go for the the, the killing blow and it was a yes, risk, yes. but at, at that point in the game, I was far enough ahead that um, I was making a few um, high-risk gambles, hoping that the you know it was a high-risk, high-reward situation where I could possibly lose. Um, I don't know if it ever landed, or you know, I don't know if you ever saw it, but I actually brought Haig over. Haig, the HQ, was also landing in Wilhelmshaven. No, I didn't. <laughs> so um, I terrified me even more. <laughs> the the butcher, right? Um, yeah. So, I was actually really, really strongly committing. I had like three or four forces, and I, just to show you how little I understood about the amphibious invasion mechanic, um, I wasn't able to offload troops. It turns out that you can't freely access a port until it gets up to a supply of five. And oh, so that's what it is. Interesting. Yeah, I didn't know that myself, so I, I was running into a big problem where um, I had all these transports just sitting right off the coast, and I couldn't land any of them. It's pretty funny because wow. if your submarines had been active in that area, I was I was worried that they might be. I was trying to surround those ships with um, transit with escorts and battleships and all kinds of stuff. Well, to well, here's another thing: you had an essentially a sub-free existence in terms of your merchant fleets because I only learned later in the game that you actually have to click the hunt option to make the subs hunt on the merchant <laughs> um, lanes. So essentially, my subs were just kind of sitting there. Um, I think I was able to sink a few ships, but. Um, yeah, I, would say, I mean, the submarines are completely lost out on that potential um, loss to your income. The other thing that crushed me in the game, uh, and this I think was, for me, the killing blow, was, um, and I'm guessing this is because you were taking, you know, areas that were, like, full of national morale points or whatever, um, but my research wasn't going as quickly as it usually does. Like, it was really, really slow. Um, mm -hmm. You know, for instance, usually, like, the infantry warfare comes out in, like, three or four turns, but uh, up until the end of our game, I only unlocked um, trench warfare. Mm. research yeah i mean so, where did yeah. you ever I, I mean if you go to the top of the screen and there there's a reports and then you can click on that and you can click on graphs and then on top of that if you there's a sub category called research diplomacy on the left hand side um now i'm starting a new game so there's nothing in this but 
I was constantly accessing this during the series, and it actually does reveal, oh, it might actually reveal more than it should, because it does show that your, what your research and your diplomacy investments were. So I was kind of tracking how much research points you were putting in, how much diplomacy. I saw, of course, that you were putting in diplomacy points, and that was also yeah, obvious from the fact that Bul Bulgaria was swinging. It would give me those little pop-ups that Bulgaria swings towards the Central Powers by 4%, 6%, whatever. Right, right. It gives you kind of a hint of what's going on. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I, I was really hoping they would join. I mean, that was my, my hope. I mean, I, I knew I screwed up really bad with Serbia, because what I should have done is just uh, sort of committed to an attack. And then I think I would have gotten Bulgaria without much of a, much difficulty. But once I realized that I wasn't going to get them as an ally, I was just like, oh, man, this is really going downhill. <laughs> yeah, and what's worse is uh, Romania okay. even ended up coming into the war before Bulgaria did. <laughs> yes, yes very very strange occurrences but um yeah i guess that's sort of part of the game yeah serbia i think it's a tough nutshell to crack um i i didn't i don't know what your um what ultimately your approach was because i know that there is a possibility to divert um the austro-hungarian reinforcements from serbia to russia did you end up choosing that decision or did you know i d i uh, actually i may have i may have i think i was going very very strong on the on the russian front yeah. Uh, specifically to try to take like a uh, Poland, uh, the the, Pol the area of modern day Poland. Yeah. Um, but um, what happened with Serbia was my, my approach there was purely defensive. Like I just did not want Serbia to break out. So I was like, let me just hold them here, focus entirely on Russia and uh, just keep them happy. Like just keep them here, keep them under guard and uh, not have any sort of incident, you know? And up until I think like the last few turns that that seemed to have worked. Mm -hmm. But again, I, I think I should have gone straight for uh, straight for Belgrade and uh, just taking it as quickly as possible. Yeah, I've read, I, I, I've actually, now that the, obviously the embargo on us watching each other's videos is over, with the series being over, I was able to scan through a few of the initial comments you got, and I saw several people who were like strongly advocating for this approach. I, again, like you and I are not really the experts, but it, it appears that at least there's some armchair experts in the comments section. <laughs> so a lot of them yeah, were saying, absolutely. just throw a lot of your troops um, at, at Belgrade and just um yes yes just, and, and, it doesn't matter if you lose them just take and that's kind of, it's funny that um we were we were talking about that before we put we put the mics or not the mics but before we were recording um where it seems that like you know certain things that otherwise would have would have gone well you know in retrospect when you're when you're kind of looking at the advice you're like you know i really should have done that but since we're playing three turns ahead yeah you can't really put your advice into action when it's that specific it's um it almost has to be like a little more vague to be useful um, like for instance, somebody had mentioned, which kind of helped me, they're like, don't be so afraid to, to get your, you know, infantry units like below five, um, on attacks, if you're going to take a point. And it made me like a little more aggressive, you know? And I was like, yeah, he makes a good point. Like, um, I might as well just try to take this area. Mm -hmm. Um, but that was kind of, the, the advice was late. And of course it was meant to be that way. Um, we didn't want any of the advice really affecting, uh, our game. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I mean, I, I in particular didn't want any spoilers, but I think people were very good about that. I didn't see any spoiler comments. Um, I don't think I saw any spoiler comments in my in my section, at least none that I remember. Yeah, I, I, I didn't have any on my on my end either. Uh, and it wouldn't have mattered because we were playing in the future. But yeah, it's a it's a really yes. good point. Obviously, we couldn't really put into practice what you said. Is actually you, you phrased it perfectly. You actually needed more vague advice to make it more general. Because any specific right, exactly. advice, it would have been the you know the the circumstance would already have passed by the time that advice. I mean. The, it was already obsolete the advice that you got because <laughs> the yeah, situation had absolutely. already evolved into something else absolutely it's like when you know like when you when you lose a job and you have like a really unsupportive friend and uh instead of like saying hey man everything will be okay he's like you know what you should have done is yeah <laughs> no but it's that's already i've already lost it so we can't have that discussion that's right that's what engineers um, do by the way that's what engineers they only like to yes, solve problems <laughs> after so, they're after the right after the problem occurs you need to know what the problem is first and then you solve it yeah exactly this is uh look at i'm an engineer my wife can probably tell you stories about this you know it's not it's not useful <laughs> no 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 sometimes people just need to yeah just need to talk so um I have, I have some other questions. What did you think about the naval combat that went on? You mentioned already that the submarines didn't... Um, I actually thought your submarines were incredibly effective at killing my units. I don't. I really don't know what kind of unrealized potential that they have. I think that is, that's more or less what you were alluding to, that there was some unrealized potential. But I, I actually felt yeah. that the, you were doing pretty well. 
um, killing my units with your subs, both in the I North Sea what, and what, in the happened, Mediterranean. What happened there was um, was when we had that first naval encounter, and again, like this, this just goes to show you the difference between uh, a human player and the AI. Is you know, I wiped out the British fleet. Um, when I was facing the AI, like no problem whatsoever. Uh -huh. And when the French fleet arrived, I had time to like retreat my units back to the Northern Sea and pretty much keep them safe. But in this, pretty much we had like a Titanic clash. That was huge. Was just, what yeah, a great just, start like, to the series, I thought. Absolutely Titanic clash. I mean, it would have been something <laughs> that would have been talked about to this day. You yeah. Know, like uh, in the great naval battle of, you know, hundreds of thousands of men died at sea, et cetera, et cetera. But, um, Pretty much after that, I was like, well, I don't have a Navy. I mean, not none, not a Navy to speak of. So what can I do to kind of affect Tortuga? And I was like, well, let me just pretty much create what I called in, in my episode the Wolf Pack. And I just sort of threw submarines where I thought you might be passing with ships. And mm -hmm. as soon as I caught one, I'd send out like two or three of those subs, attack it, see if you sent reinforcements. And if you didn't, I'd send in the rest and finish it off. Mm -hmm. And I just sort of was playing around with that strategy. Uh, they were very effective, I, by the yeah. way. Those submarines, um, I was very, very scared of them. In fact, I I ended up dumping a lot of points into anti-submarine warfare um, research just because I was so scared about the long-term effect of submarines. And I, I think it was a very strong move. Um, I, I don't know exactly where your submarines went. I think I saw one north and maybe the Norwegian Sea or something. But Yeah, we I had them mostly, I mean, mostly, of course, east of the English coast, just right in the middle of the North Sea. Mm -hmm. um, but I also had some Dogger Bank kind of close to you just to keep an eye on, like, your movements. Oh, really? Uh, okay. And again, yeah, and that goes back to Fog of War, of course, was I was hoping, and I'm not sure it, it really worked. I was hoping that being, like, four or five tiles away, I could see your ships leaving port. Uh -huh. um, but I don't think I actually did. So oh, maybe you need to be, like, two tiles away or three tiles away. It would be interesting to see like how many tiles you need to be away with a sub to like see movement at a port. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I I don't know. That's I, I think if there's a little fog of war, I, I have fog of war turned off on this, just so I can see both sides and look at all the different points and all that. But um, when you're moving through the fog of war, there's like a slightly darker shade of blue and then a lighter shade of blue. And I think that if you put your units so that the lighter shade of blue is covering the port, you'll be able to see them. I don't know. Um, I think they might also be able to see you. I don't know how that works with submarines. So, yeah, there's a lot of mechanics that I'm sure the details, I mean, they at least remain a mystery to me and maybe for you. So. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think also uh, one attack you did, and I'm pretty sure it was like uh, maybe episode 12 or 13, was that attack on the Western Front. And I got very, very scared that you were going to break through. Like, I oh, pretty man. much diverted. Um, I think that's kind of what stopped um, a lot of my momentum is the east. In the east was when I saw that, I was like, okay, this is not good. Uh, and I pretty much moved, like, three or four divisions, or armies, I should say, uh, all the way to the Western Front, you know, just to, just to maybe hopefully stop you. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you retook Belgium, and I was like, okay, I can live with him retaking Belgium. But um, had you gotten, like, actually into Germany, I was like, no, that's, that's it. You know, it's finished. Yeah. Um, so yeah. that really terrified me. And I think at that point I decided, and I had even mentioned it like on some of the episodes that like I was going for a, just a turtle strategy where it's just like hold on to anything I can. And I hope I was going to mention this before, but um, I, I hope nobody was like off put by the fact that we ended the series when we did, because really what would have happened and, and maybe some people would want to see this. I'm not sure. I don't think the majority would. But if you if you would want to see this, let us know in the comments. Uh, and that is like I could have just sort of like turtled up. And we would have just pretty much gone like back and forth of like you attacking, me reinforcing over and over and over and over for, you know, months on end. Uh, I think we could have made it maybe to like mid-1916 potentially. Um, but that's kind of what worried me about continuing. It's like, uh, I don't know if people want to see that. Uh, it seems like kind of a boring episode. Yeah, um, I'm. the writing was on the wall. So I don't think it was an unfair time to end the series. So, um, right. Yeah, I mean, the most exciting part is the drama and not knowing who's going to win. So when it starts to become a little lopsided, I, I'm, I, I could have gone either way. Um, I think that a 17-episode series is is plenty long to me, especially because your videos, I, I started to look. Um, I watched the first three videos, um, and they're, they're relatively short. I don't, God forbid you, you take a look at mine, Agrippa. They're, they're like 50 minutes each. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. So no, there's a very different approach because I mean I, I think yeah. um, in terms of uh, uh, in terms of like our strategy approach or, or just our I guess our, our approach to, to this genre in general um, I'm not as serious in terms of like uh, being a tactician or anything like that um, you know regularly on my channel I'll put up like defeats um, you know like hey look where I messed up etc 
uh, I think it's fun. That's and, really good. Uh, yeah, I I, I, I I try not to take myself too seriously. Like, um, I, I make mistakes. I, of course, with like a lot of my videos, um, I'm extremely offensive. Not like not like I'm I'm cursing at people, but um, in the sense that like I always carry out like a very aggressive approach in war games. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> offensive as in you I, go on the offensive. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And the way it works, like some people have said, like, oh, you're a terrible general. Others have said you're great because. I mean, the way that works is it either you have an amazing offensive or you have a horrifying loss. So <laughs> I'm sort of a... He's the Grant. Like He's the Grant of... <laughs> sort of like that French general in passive glory with the scar on his face. Like, I just want massive offensives. I don't care if I lose a bunch of men as long as I have victory in the end. Mm, uh, it's yeah. terrible, but uh, it is what it is, yeah. Well, I, this is what I think. I um, Pete, We're playing this game and we're recording this and I, I do take it a lot. I, I try to do some i try to make my play efficient but i want to i think it's just a good thing for people to take a step back and realize when you're watching these games somebody's playing it and although i yes in particular am trying to play it pretty efficiently agrippa is just enjoying a game and it's it's like yes. it's, it's it's a fun game to play and not everyone is going to play it the same way as you the viewer um may like to see it's just different sense of it's just different styles and and I, I like that though, Grip. I like that you can put like it's it's a really bold move for you to have the courage and the the I don't know the, the I don't know discipline or I don't know what the right word is, but to put up a, a loss. It, it, right, it actually right. means it's kind of <laughs> most people I, when I think, they they would I just think, like when I when I first started cut you off, I was just gonna say like when I first started um, doing YouTube, you know I had seen a lot of other YouTubers um, in the strategy genre. And I noticed that, like, they would go out of their way to just put up, like, victories and and they would seem like really, really bright people. And I don't doubt for a second that they are. But it just sort of made me feel like, you know, I'm sure these guys played a game where they just completely got wrecked before they got this good. And I, I wanted to see that, like, transition. You know, I wanted to see, like, going from being awful. Like, for instance, when I started playing Gravity Tactics, um, I didn't understand the game at all. Yeah. You know, I was pretty much just, like pressing keys like everyone but then, right exactly <laughs> it's and a hard I, game you know, I have those videos up but then like once i learned it um i really appreciated those moments when i didn't know anything because it's it's weird to say but it's almost like i preferred the game when i didn't know as much about it if that if that makes any sense i, like, I totally um, know what you're saying I, yeah like it, it lost its romance you know what i mean like because now i understand all the ins and outs so like it's there's nothing there that's like intriguing to me anymore it just is what it is yeah, um, because yeah, life you know, life is not a series of numbers, right? Life is an experience, right. and, and you know, like I, I have this. Um, this is a completely different game, but I don't know if you ever played Victory at Sea Pacific. Um, yes. When I first played it, I was like overwhelmed, like so amazed by the experience. Now the game is very buggy, so part of the reason that I grew not to like it as much is because you know you start to encounter a lot of bugs. But the first, I was it was before I had a chance to put numbers into the game. Which, you know, it's, just, it's the way I am. I put numbers onto everything. I'm a mathematical kind of guy. But unfortunately, it also ruins that kind of the experience, you know? It ends up being just like, let's let's make this a number crunching game. And so I know exactly what you're talking about. Some of the, some of, like, I remember even in, in games that are not strategy games at all, one of the, one of my favorite games of all time is the X series, X3 Terran Conflict. I remember I got into this game. I started, I didn't know what I was doing or X3 Reunion, actually, but, you know, before I even knew how to, like, dock my ship to a shipyard, that, that was just so awesome, just ex having an experience. So, I know yes. what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I mean, we've already been, it just seems like time flies when I'm having fun. God, I can't believe it's already oh, been 20 minutes in this recording. <laughs> yeah, it's not a problem. It's not a problem. Um, not, but to touch on that, I was going to say, yeah. I, I don't know if it, it could just be, maybe maybe I'm a schizophrenic and, and unaware of it. Um, but one thing I do with strategy games a lot, and I've always done it ever since, you know, I think the first strategy game I ever played was, um, oh God, what's it called? Um, Civil War Generals 2. Hmm. And um, I kind of fell in love with the genre. And what I tend to do is um, I'll sort of, I, I don't know what a better word for it, except like I'll daydream or I guess I'll imagine, mm -hmm. uh, let's say we're fighting on a certain front, what the men on that front would be experiencing. So I'll be going about my day to day and I'll just think, you know, well, you know, on turn four, we were on this trench near this town, you know, and sort of I'll imagine it in my mind um, and sort of it gives me uh, more of a, I don't know, like a sense of, uh, of belonging to, to the game that I'm playing or... Um, 
Mm -hmm. I, it's just sort of an imagination thing, and I'm not sure you do the same thing, but I'm always sort of like daydreaming about uh, what would this actual conflict look like in real life. Yeah, uh, I mean, cetera, I, I, it's you know? part of the reason why I do YouTube videos is because when I used to right. play Hearts of Iron 2, I used to narrate to myself, pretending that I was a history yes. documentary. I used to be <laughs> yes, like, yeah, yeah, and yeah. no, the great admiral is pulled into you, port. You know exactly what I'm talking about, like the good old days <laughs> of forum AARs and that stuff. Exactly. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Um, so we all we all have that, I think, as as, as uh, strategy gamers, um, and like for, so. For instance, even when I'm having like a defeat, um, like I've had some pretty glorious defeats, you know, where okay, well I'm dying, but at least I can take out like 200 Germans with me. So I'll still try to make it fun, you know what I mean? I won't just be like, oh well, I'm done now, you know. Uh huh. Kind of like I'll still take it seriously, um, but of course, you know, I'm losing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that, I, that makes sense to me. I mean. Uh, <laughs> You, you, it's more about the experience sometimes than getting the min max optimal die roll and all that yeah sometimes that that's i don't know and i believe that this is more the spirit of the, the way games are designed anyways not to play them as i do i just remember because i played tabletop war games and for those obviously you needed to know all the game mechanics i've i've always brought unfortunately i think it's a bad thing but i've always brought this uh, mentality to, into games that you should know all the game mechanics um, especially in multiplayer, this is a, one of the unfortunate things about multiplayer is that um, I, do, I don't like playing multiplayer very much, like PvP. The exact series we just did, is it puts me outside of my comfort zone because I'm a very competitive person and I usually just leave that for sports, physical activity. Right. Um, but th then when, I, when we actually get into a game like this, I, I always feel like I don't know all the mechanics, I don't know how to play correctly, and um, I guess the AI, I don't care. But... I don't know. I, I always feel, I somehow feel differently about things when it's, when it's not an AI. It's a com competition. So, I don't right, know. right, right. No, I can understand that. I can understand. That. And I, by no means am, am I not like you know taking things seriously. Um, you know, my approach is still like I still want to win. Of course, I still want to, uh, or at least have like you know an acceptable stalemate. Um, I think we all have like the sort of that that winning spirit or that like you know I, I want to win this and you get kind of like nervous that you yeah. know, you're gonna <laughs> totally fail and uh, yeah 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 there's yeah, a, so a I, yeah that. that's that's totally normal I think um, uh, you know I, I think what you're talking about is like there are some people and I, I have met some people like especially now you're talking about board games um, when I was a much younger fellow um, you know I lived in New York City and uh, there was this place called Neutral Ground and you know people would go there and play Magic the Gathering and uh, you know, all these board games, Catan, just, you know, any, anything you could really think of. Mm -hmm. And there would be those guys that when they would lose, they would like, uh, they would get a really angry and like aggressive and just like, this is ridiculous, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I've never been like that. I've, I've always tried to like, you know, one of the reasons I've tried not to take too seriously is like, if I got that enraged about losing a game, I mean, I would be dead. <laughs> I, would be dead by now. <laughs> I really would be. Um, because I tend to do that quite a lot. Um, you know, I've, I've certainly got to like, sort of lose to learn i guess that's a great great attitude yeah, yeah I've, I've always i've tried to take it less seriously because look at i have kids now and i'm playing games with the kids and stuff and okay i mean even with my friends i'm starting to make it more about the experience if you kind of hit on something i i don't know you you struck a chord with me with this experience thing and i i need to even like go back and reflect on this myself i think that people right. yeah my, my content does um focus more on the numbers and all that but it's nice to have that experience so yeah, but um, you've, got some, you've got some amazing stuff. I mean, without a doubt, Tortuga, you ha you play some games that I would not even dream of uh, of understanding. And I, I think like maybe I could understand them, but it would require you know weeks of study. Um, you know, War in the Pacific. Uh, just I, oh, I just can't. I'm not going to play War in the Pacific. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's not that's beyond but, me. <laughs> yeah, but but I mean, just any game like that. Like, there's certainly games out there that. Uh, that you understand that are that are far more complicated than stuff I play. Well, I'll tell you, man. Um, there, there's a new game coming out soon, Shadow Empire. I hope that you spend some time. It's unfortunately complicated, as you're, you know, alluding to games which are complicated. I think that it is one of them. But boy, it's a blast to play. I hope that, um, you know, you get some time on Shadow Empire. Great 4x war game combination. So. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think like, um, you know, just to sort of. Uh, getting to our conclusion anyway yeah um I, I think we should absolutely try to find a game and i was mentioning this earlier but maybe somebody listening to uh the stream can kind of suggest something and that is you know i'm sure both me and tortuga we want to grow, grow our channels you know look we uh we all have uh, mouths to feed i have my own mouth 
it's quite <laughs> big. So, um, but you know, um, we all have mouths to feed, and we certainly, you know, we have jobs outside of YouTube. But I mean, if we could make this uh, a serious profession, that would be incredible. Um, and um, if there's a game out there that not only appeals to you fellows that like this niche strategy, but that also ap appeals to like a wider strategy audience, then let us know, and uh, maybe we could check it out. Mm -hmm. um, I know I've been playing Iron Harvest. I think that's going to be. I think it's going to do well. But again, it, it does have that sort of indie feel where it, it may just be kind of niche. Mm -hmm. um, but for instance, me and a uh, here were throwing around uh, Dawn of War Two. Uh, if there's something you guys can just recommend, then then we'll take a look. You know. Yeah, absolutely. If anybody has ideas for co-op games moving forward, that's yeah, we're we're all ears. We'd love to hear it. Um, I also um, so just if we can go through like a lightning round. I want this. I I do want. I asked people if for questions, and we have um, there was some four questions. So maybe we can just go through a lightning round of this, going back to Strategic Command World War One. I. Um, I had um, just four quick questions. So first of all, the we we can kind of lump these together. I'll just read the first three questions because they're all related. It's a one, question one is should the Germans attack in the west or east first? Question two is in the west is it better to do breakthrough or attrition? And question three is when and under what conditions should the German surface fleet sortie? So those are pretty three interesting questions. I think at least the first two are pretty related. Um, you right, end yeah. up going with an east first approach. I in my own central powers went with a west first approach. Do you have any yeah, comments was, on that? I was very, I was very impressed by you taking. Uh, I guess it just took you a year to take Paris, right? Um, I don't remember exactly, but that sounds about yeah, right. It was pretty, I, I, and that amazed me. I was because, well, that's yeah. Just to comment on it. So the reason that amazes me is I don't see it as beneficial for either side to make pushes on the Western Front. Mm -hmm. You know, it pretty much. I, I almost like if, if I were on the Entente, I would say. My, you know, my, my approach would be defensive, and if I was the Axis, my approach would be defensive. Of course, I'm not talking about the initial invasion of Belgium, but but, but after that, mm -hmm. um, because it's just such a brutal front. You know, there's barbed wire all over the damn place. There's forts everywhere, uh, you know, landmines, pillboxes, you name it. You know, it's just a problematic area. And the reason I go for um, the East is just this. I mean, sorry, but the Tsar's army is weak. Um, yeah, it's now, incredibly. What, what, yeah, it's just it's like they're they're basically the orcs of this game. <laughs> if this game was Warhammer 40k, they would be the orcs. Um, there's a lot of them, but they're very you know they're pretty weak, um, etc. Uh, and um, that's the thing is really the only thing they they have the only thing they make up for in weakness is uh, manpower. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of them, but yeah, at least when I'm facing the AI, that seems to be a pretty easy approach. Like taking Poland is is almost uh, automatic with that approach. You know, it's just very very simple. I, you know, having done the Western first, uh, Western first approach, I think uh -huh. I'd actually agree with you. Um, I think that you were really close to breaking me in the East. I was extremely worried. You were just destroying my Russian units left and right. I think at some point in time, with especially with your German units, and especially with the German units that I assume were under Hindenburg, you were just yeah. routinely getting three to one uh, odds against. I mean, the the kills to deaths was like you would kill three to every one. I would kill and that was completely unsustainable for me i was just trying to f throw bodies into the gap so i, I just felt think that i could have thrown a few more attacks and broken through. and that's the isn't that the that's what i mean about fog of war i yes, um i think that you didn't know how close you got to breaking me and i think at some points i'm sure i didn't know how cl how few troops or how many troops you actually had um when you yeah, see a, yeah. i saw a front line in the east i always saw the front line was completely filled um, completely full of Germans. Even at the end, um, they were completely full of Germans. Then, it, like, if I go back and look at your videos, I start seeing holes. I was like, oh my gosh, she didn't have, like, almost anything there. I could have, yes, if yes, I had just yes, broken yes. through the first people, I would have had nothing but, you know, green grass between me and Berlin. So, it's just, the Fog of War, that's why I really like playing against a human, because the Fog of War, I feel like, does a really good job of masking all these things. So Absolutely. And actually, if I was more aware of it, I, I would have taken more chances. Yeah. Because I think there was only tw it was only two times where I had a gap on my Western Front, and both times, I, I, at the end of the video, I was like, "Well, I hope Tortuga doesn't notice that." <laughs> and, you, and, you, and, you, and you didn't notice them, and then you didn't notice it. So it leads me to believe that maybe, you know, if you're playing against a multiplayer opponent, you could take some risk and get some units out of the front, send them elsewhere, you know, and uh, they'll never notice. I guess it depends on your opponent. They attack. Because yes. I, I might have missed those. Um, a more aggressive opponent, I also like to I, I like to have 
nice defensive lines. I, I'm very defensive minded. If you're offensively minded, I'm defensively minded. So I'm usually thinking about how am I going to hold this line if he counterattacks. So this is really not, I'm, I'm more of a Montgomery. I'm not much of a Patton. So unfortunately that means I'm, I, I'm handicapped when it comes to making aggressive movements. So yes, I think you, I think that's a perfect um, like difference between us in terms of the general and specifically Patton, because I'm hard headed. I'm stubborn <laughs> uh, at times, maybe even kind of, kind of dumb. Um, but like there are, you know, moments where that aggressiveness really does work. Um, you know, I've certainly thought of just battles in other games where that the, the aggressive approach will work. Also with, with multiplayer games, I guess my approach is to try and scare the enemy enough to uh, sort of divert, you know, forces from one front to another. Mm -hmm. You know, that was another goal with um, with the Eastern approach is like, let's see if he'll just ignore Serbia, you know, ignore the, the southeastern part of Russia and just completely focus on this northern attack. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, mm -hmm. of course, that kind of leaves other options, um, mm -hmm. you know, other attack options open. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, I, I had a lot of fun. I'll, I, I want to oh, me mention uh, one other question that was asked, um, but really we should wrap this up, uh, was what was the point at which you felt like victory or defeat was assured? And um, I'll answer this one first. I think that when I saw that I was holding in and even starting to push back in France, probably this is around turn 11, 12, 13, something like that. When I saw I was holding solidly in France, and the main thing was when I was pushing back in Russia, when I saw that. And I, I, I think that this is all because like Serbia probably put a lot of pressure on your lines. The Austro-Hungarian units are just garbage. <laughs> so yes, I was trying to push. Really I was trying to use my Russians against the, the, south, the southern part of the front. Um, so that I could force your German units to be relocated from other places where I thought you just had way too much strength. So the only way I could try to force you to uh, do what I wanted is by attacking, which the Russians are bad at. But thank God the Austro-Hungarians are just worse. <laughs> yes, yes. So um, um, I think th I, th that's I when think I thought, that was around yeah. the same turn for me, maybe like turn 12. Mm -hmm. uh, pretty much when I saw that... Um, ever getting bulgaria over on my side was just an impossibility hmm. i was like the best thing i can hope for is to try to drag this um out and so then that's when i said to the viewers i think it was probably uh, episode 12 when i said now i'm just going to try to hold till 1916 uh just two years was my goal like let me just hold till 1916 and i'll be happy with myself um because i realized i was like there's just no way i can i can win i think it turned 14 like i tried one more attack in the east but the only way it would have worked is if you had, like, nothing there, you know, uh, besides the one line. Uh, and when I saw that I couldn't win, I was just like, okay, let me just pull back and, and defend at this point. Uh-huh. Yeah, I see. Well, hey, well, it was still a fun series. Um, look, I really look Absolutely. forward to doing something with you in the future, some kind of co-op. And, and honestly, I, I, we'd love to have you on Single Mall Strategy. Maybe you can jump on the podcast at some point with us because it's just you're very well spoken be a pleasure to have another conversation this has turned into kind of like a podcast i can't believe it's gone that it it's has, gone this long it <laughs> but it's been a well, you know, real I mean, fun with this whole COVID thing um i'm, I'm sort of having to because i am an english teacher apart from this and, and a, and a part-time voice actor uh, i'm trying to look for other avenues of work so maybe this podcast idea isn't such a bad uh, bad plan yeah and if anybody uh if anybody's well look at come on the single mall uh strategy podcast we'll get you on there for something and then uh we'll maybe do. that'll expand your horizons a bit no. Sounds good. All right, guys, make sure to check out Tortuga's channel. I'll also put a link in the video. Uh, and thank you so much for watching it, uh, especially uh, everybody from Tortuga's channel for giving your advice. And uh, just we really appreciate uh, your guys keeping your eyes on this series, especially people that stuck it through from episode one all the way to the very end. We really, really appreciate that. Yeah, it's amazing. I, it's surprising they did. <laughs> yes, me too. It, it shocked me. Uh, well said. Okay, well, that's it for us then. Thanks, Agrippa, and thanks to everyone watching. Likewise. Take care, folks.